This is this is this is. Welcome to the last Monday of January 2023. We're heading into February very soon. I think it's happening in two days. If you're listening to this right when it comes out, what's up, you guys? Tex Mex wanted to talk about it today because I've been eating nothing but Tex Mex since I've been here in Texas, and it's been glorious. I, I come to Texas, I fill up on food, and then I go back to Washington. And I do my work. So <laughs> I've been working here too, of course. But uh, man, I got to tell you, aside, you know, just homemade breakfast burritos, I've been eating fresh breakfast burritos every day. It's been amazing. I don't know if you guys can hear my dog every now and again. It sounds like something weird, but uh, let me just show you. So anyway, yes, I've been eating so much Tex-Mex. I haven't even gone out to a restaurant, but just eating it from groceries at home. And we do, we have been getting these tamales from the um, farmer's market. So here in Waco, there's a farmer's market every Saturday. You can go down there, you can get, you can get produce, produce, you can get actually already made meals and stuff like that. It's, it's great. Um, I don't go personally, but... <laughs> My wife likes to go down there. So anyway, um, Sergio's has, it, it's a, a Mexican place here in town, and they have a brick-and-mortar restaurant, but they have a food truck, and it's usually right downtown Waco. Um, uh, Dichotomy is like a coffee slash bar. That's why it's called Dichotomy. Um, you can get drinks, you can get coffee. But uh, it's like in the parking lot across the street from Dichotomy. Um these breakfast burritos are insane. I, I I couldn't eat these every day probably because they it would just be my body would just harden. My arteries would harden up and clog and it would be terrible. But Sergio's breakfast tacos, like I always get sausage, egg, cheese, avocado, and cilantro. Now that comes in a, a soft tortilla. Um, it's all mixed in there together. It's so good. You add, they give you, you can get both. I, I get both verde sauce, red sauce. Uh, the verde sauce is spicy. It's not too spicy. It's just, it's more spicy. It's more hot. And then the red, red sauce, if you like it mild, it's a nice flavor. It's good. It's, it's more of a street taco vibe. I mean the verde and the, and the, the red, the rojo, if you want to can keep it the language consistent here um is it's traditional it's not anything out there it's just really really nice hot sauce so i always get that and that comes with it and um the kids get like Rhodes gets a egg and cheese or a sausage and cheese no no he just gets egg and cheese and um and then sailor my my 9 year old almost 10 year old is uh she gets sausage egg and cheese and my wife gets sausage egg and cheese and avocado and i get sausage egg and cheese avocado and cilantro so i'm like the most i'm the most of everyone but it's not usually the case it's just this this particular order but sergio's i i can't speak highly enough about this place um sergio is the the guy he's in there making the tacos he's got this big beard now um and no, I didn't find any beard hair. I was thinking about it. I'm like, am I going to find beard hairs in my my tacos? And no, I didn't. So somehow he's got it under control. But uh, his wife works the takes the orders and takes the money. And and um, he's got his kids in there, or probably his grandkids at this point. Um, I wonder if his kids work there. You know, it's 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 interesting because some kids really really take uh take a liking to the family business right and other kids and i'm talking about adult kids um other uh, you know they they go off and do their own thing you know I don't, I don't think there's a right or wrong thing it's just every every situation's different and if you're you know I, I know a guy that that inherited his his dad's business and it's you know you know they they were rich he, the dude was rich just based on his dad's business but now that he's in charge now he he's the rich guy you know like um just automatically just don't screw it up and you're going to be fine you're going to be rich that kind of like generational wealth is 
<clears throat> wow, it's not, it's, not, it's not something I understand. I'll, tell, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> it's just wild. It's like, good for you. Don't screw it up. Uh, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's crazy to think about, though. Like, we, we're all in, in different, different walks of life, right? Like, um, think about my kids, though. It, you know, can, can a kid... Can a kid like really take music, you know, and take that torch? And, and yeah, and I think the answer is yeah. I mean, um, it, it's not the same as taking your parents' family business that's like a furniture business or a moving company or whatever it is, right? It's not the same thing as that because, I mean, it's not like my kids could be like, okay, now I'm president of Mike Herrera.com, you know, like it's just not the, it's not the thing, but, um, they have to do their own thing. They, they do have to start over, but they, they have a head start because of where I've come from and because of what I've experienced, I can, I can help them. I can, you know, help them with connections or whatever, but you know, I didn't talk about it too much on the podcast. I think I mentioned it maybe once, but my, my, my daughter sailor released a song over Christmas it was a, a week or two before Christmas, and she wrote this song, and we were just like, oh my gosh, you have to record this. And it's a song that doesn't have a full band. It has guitar, it has ukulele, it has um, some bass, it has some, some, I think, some light percussion, but we didn't really want to do a full band because, um, one, I didn't tell her anything to change about the song. Like, I didn't try to produce the song. I didn't... I didn't tell her to change lyrics. I had a few thoughts, but I kept them to myself because um, I'll admit, uh, Tom Chichilla was like, okay, just let her be. And I was like, okay, okay, good, good, good note. Um, don't be an overbearing dad. Don't try to like make her perfect right now. I feel like, I feel like it's a pretty good thing to like allow your kids to make mistakes and allow them to learn from those mistakes. And this is something that, you know, we weren't going to let her do anything catastrophic you know it was uh, a safe place to play and so she got in the studio and we made it pretty easy for her she she recorded that ukulele herself that's the she wrote the song on ukulele she wrote all the chords she did all the parts the way she did them and then i just added a, a guitar chord that was just strum bling bling like stuff like that nothing crazy and bass, same same with bass to add some low into the to the bedrock of it, boom, boom, Sing, single notes for the most part, nothing fancy. So, really, all the melody you're getting is from her vocal and her ukulele and that pluck, pluck, pluck. And um, she's getting better at guitar, so I feel like um, this coming year she'll be able to record on guitar as well. Um, but right now, like she can play guitar chords and stuff, but they're just like. She's getting better and better, but putting your fingers to the fretboard is really, really tough for her. Um, she can do that ukulele really easily. So I think ukulele is a great little step for young kids. And for me even, it's really fun to just plunk around on. My dad got me a ukulele for Christmas years ago. And immediately, uh, immediately sailor took it you know it was like three years ago i think two or three years ago um great gift you know little cool cool gift and but you know i just mentioned sailor just because it's like geez it's it's a family business and um you know aside from her doing doing music she's just creative you know and and it's great when any of your kids out there are or wanting to make things, whatever that is. It doesn't it doesn't have to be a song. It doesn't have to be a video. But um, you know, Sailor is like writing stories and writing like scripts for for short short films and little short sketches. Um, you know, and it's not like it's completely thought out and you know bullet pointed. And you know, she, I'm just she's just doing her thing the way she thinks of it, and and it's so cool to see uh, the momentum that she has, you know, so much momentum into like whatever she's thinking about things. And she's like, I'm going to tomorrow, I'm going to write a script. We're going to go over these things, blah, blah, blah. You know, she's just like has plans. And I love that. I love, 
I love seeing that in, in the younger generations. So I encourage that wholeheartedly in, in all, all of your kids, you know, just go out, make things, get, get creative in whatever way you can think of, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be done the same way that it was done before. That, that it doesn't have to be done the same way that I did it, that our parents did it, you know, we can change it up. We can, we can take the good, leave the bad, whatever it is, and just because we, you know, may think something's bad doesn't mean somebody else does. So that's another thing is like, you, a lot of times, you know, we all think my way is the best way. And, and, and a lot of times it's the best way for us but it's not always the best way for somebody else. And a good example of that for me, like in the studio, is I like to sing to myself. I like to, I like to do a guide track where I sing the right notes and then I do, and the right phrasing, and then from there I'll sing over that, but then I'll sing harder. And I'm, it's like in the back of my mind almost. It's like, it's like I can hear it, it's 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 like you're connecting. I don't know if any, anybody's seen Avatar, where they connect themselves to those flying creatures with their hair. Their hair connects to their th wackadoodle thing. <laughs> I don't really know what it's all called, but they're bonded, something like that, right? So that's kind of how I feel when I when I'm play, singing to myself, that's I think why it's so easy for me to sing doubles. I don't always put doubles on all my vocals at all, but when I do, it's it's the same feeling. It's it's I'm singing along to myself, and it's like it's like flying with somebody else in tandem, and every move is exactly the same. It's fluid. That's how I feel, and so when I can get that, I really feel like I'm nailing you know a recording, you know, and. and We've been working on new new music, and that was that was really fun, you know, to to uh, just get back into the studio and just be constantly working, working, working. You're gonna see a lot of stuff soon, soon enough um, as we get closer to to being ready to to let you guys hear some of this stuff. But yeah, it's uh, it's a work in progress, and and I, I love that process, but. But like I was saying before, there's no right way. It's just right for you, you know? And, and even what's right for you isn't always right for you. That can change over time. I know a lot of people that, um, you know, were big drinkers, big partiers, smoked a lot of weed. Now they're not touching any of it. You know, they're, they're sober, they're not smoking weed, nothing. You know, exercise, eating healthy. And I look at that and I'm just like, that's cool. I'm very much up for that. I love I love it when people are empowered and feel strong and feel like they've got some momentum. That's the word of the day. Momentum in this life. And um, I, I just don't, I'm not there yet in my life. Like I'm not partying all the time or anything. Like it's not, it's definitely, my gears have changed. I don't, I don't drink nearly as much as I used to. Um, but, but at the same time, I, you know, I still and now and again like to like like when I'm watching football, I like to enjoy a beer. Um, maybe I'm you know on a long calls with the guys or with Tom Chichilla or something. Uh, those that know him know he can talk. He can talk a while, and so it's, now and again I'll crack a beer. And of course I I regulate myself. I'll be like I've been drinking too much lately, and I'll be like okay I'm not going to drink anything but red wine at dinner for a while, you know, or whatever, or or at least. Uh, for me, because I don't really have a problem, I can stop drinking anytime. Of course, right? Uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, I don't like set the the boundaries so so harsh. Like if there's a reason to go out and have a drink, like if I'm out with my buddies, like in town, hey, I'm in town one night, meet me at the bar. I'm gonna go out and have a drink with them, uh, unless unless of course. Uh, I had set a standard of, okay, this month I'm not drinking. But I, I haven't done that. Like, I know there's a lot of uh, dry Januaries happening right now. And it crossed my mind. There's a, you know, sober October and no shave November, <laughs> you know, things like that. But I, I just feel like I'm just too busy for all that. I'm just, I'm doing my thing. It's hard enough to stay on my schedule. If it becomes a problem, I change it. You know, and, and I'm the same way with food, with, with diets. Uh, I... I eat, I enjoy the holiday food, and when it 
when that fun time is over, I try to change up my, my routine a little bit, um, get more active, eat a little less, eat less crazy food, eat less sugar. And I just do that, you know, and it works for me. And it's a very, it's a very Mike Herrera way to do it because it's not organized and it's not like following any program. Although I do, uh, for fitness, I do have a few, a few different programs I've bought over the years where I can just sign in, go, go to the website and there's videos and, and I can do that. And of course there's YouTube and you can do yoga on YouTube and all that. So I, it's, it's hard for me to commit to like, I got to be here at this time, at this time. I do that with shows. I do that a ton with shows. And of course, because of that, I don't want to, I don't want to overly commit myself around in my life. It's hard enough to do this podcast every week, people. If you only knew. But um, the routine, it's all about just changing my routine, and that's how I lose weight. That's how I get in shape. That's how I do whatever it is I want to do. That's how I learn something. Is it's how I learn you know, a Goldfinger set, if a Goldfinger set's coming up. That's how I learn MXPX or solo sets. I immerse myself in it. I start thinking about it more, and that pushes me in that direction. And, and, and it seems to work for me, and it's so in my head and... and Hard to like you're like if I was a consultant for somebody like a life coach kind of thing like okay my career life coach here we go what's your problem son um, yeah yeah so you're gonna want to exercise you're gonna want to eat well generally just less you know eat better than you're doing right now like let's start reversing the curse right um, that's like what am I gonna tell people like I don't I don't have I don't have like this like super deep technical information for you when it comes to like living your life i think it's um little nuggets here and there for sure but uh the problem is 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 i don't know i'm learning as i go just like you guys and so <laughs> you know uh, songwriting for me is like um it's what i do but i don't I, it, sometimes i call it a job but like i don't feel like it's a job it's something i do that like does not pay me absolutely anything while I'm doing it. Like, it's not like I'm work clocking in my hours when I write a song. So it's something that like I start, like I haven't been writing lately. You know, we, we went through the holiday season, all that vinyl last year. Um, I've been really still kind of helping out with a lot of the, the mail order. Goldfinger, you know, MXPX had shows last year. Goldfinger had shows this year. Um, Goldfinger had shows last year that I missed because of the MXPX shows. Um, it's just, I wasn't in the mindset to write. You know, there, there's artists out there that, that are always writing and always thinking about writing. And you have to keep yourself in that mindset. At least I do. Um, like I said, everybody's different. So for me... I know exactly what it means when, when somebody says Eminem is always writing. He's always writing things down in his notebook. He's always writing, carrying something like this around. I don't know if he actually does this anymore, if he just puts it on his phone. But this is, I've got books and books of these, like just a bunch of these. And, and this one's m mostly journals, a journal, but I've got song lyrics, whatever goes, you just fill those things up. And Eminem says, most of that stuff never makes it into a song. It's not a lyric. It's it's just I'm keeping myself juiced. I'm keeping myself like like a, a fighter would be just training all the time. Not full training, but just training all the time. So he's ready. If he gets a fight, he he can he can ramp up to fighting, being ready to fight in like a couple weeks, which is unheard of if you if you're not in shape to fight. And, and it's like that. Songwriting's like that. Um, and you just you get juiced up for it. And so for me, in order to get juiced up for songwriting, I need to start thinking about songwriting. I need to start thinking about songs. I need to start thinking about my own, what it is I'm trying to accomplish. And if it's just I need to write a song or I want to write a song, um, you, usually it would be I need to write a song because... I feel like okay, I'm I'm it I'm due for it, right? Like, but but really, it, I don't need to write a song. It, it usually happens when it happens, and there's no forcing it. It's um, you don't force it, but you stretch, right? You stretch out. It's like doing yoga. 
You know, you're 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 stretching things, you're you're testing your movement, testing the movement of your body. And I think that's what songwriting is at first, is you're testing your mind, you're testing your creativity, and sometimes you write a dud, sometimes you write a Superman. You know, like, it, it, it goes both ways. And so the more you stretch out, I think the better you're gonna perform um, when it comes to just coming up with ideas, being creative, uh, tapping into what's already in there, but just not on the surface at the moment. And I think that's another thing is just by what I mean by stretching is when you stretch your body, um, you got to do the same thing with your mind, you know, in order to be creative, in order to have that continual creative ideas. I, I think like anything, eating begets eating. The more you eat, the more you want to eat your stomach you know, it gets bigger and you want to eat more. And that's true of myself anyway. I mean, and the less you eat, the uh, the more I want to eat. So that's not a good one. But <laughs> exercise begets exercise when you're in the gym. The more you're in the gym, the more you enjoy being in the gym, even if you always hate it. And so songwriting is the same thing. It's like once you write a song, usually you want to write another song. And then you want to write another song. And, and, and this could be over weeks, months, whatever it is. Days, if you're that good, you know, if you're that, if you got those, those ideas coming. But um, that, that's what you want to work up to. So stretching the mind is like thinking about songwriting, listening to your ideas, playing guitar a lot. Like you have to like be available to have an idea, to have an idea, right? So like for me... It might be sitting down on the couch right there. I'll sit on the couch with my guitar and I won't have a plan. I'll have like, okay, I want to write, work on a song. I don't know which song because I have my voice memos and I have lyrics and stuff through in, in, my, um, in my notes app. So I've got things I can look at to spark an idea because I think that's the best way to do it is like when you're going to do the deep work of writing a song, um, unless you do the deep work right when you have that idea, I'll usually just go back and tap into my, my past ideas, um, something that I've been thinking about all week. I'll finally like have time to sit down and work on it. And, and that, that's, that's still like deep work. It's not something that you just like sit there, smoke a joint or something and like, boom, song comes to you. Like you have to like, play the guitar and then something finally comes out of this it's like it's like sculpting clay where it's just like a lump and then you play guitar more more chords you change the chord progression you have a melody idea in your head you have maybe like one line that pops into your head and you start singing that <coughs> then you start singing like a second line and you're like what would go with that you know and then it just starts forming so you're like you're sculpting this this clay sculpture into something that forms in 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 some songs don't fully form and, and they kind of feel like that. They come off like, okay, this was a cool idea that didn't quite get get to the top, you know? And and, and there's songs that I've written that we've released like that, you know, and, and a lot of artists have, you know, and I think that's okay too. I think, you know, you don't always have to release a completely chiseled out idea where every single idea is put in the right place. Like sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you don't want the 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 not vaudeville, what would it be like uh, the, the most, the most uh, prestigious musical school and musical um, orchestra company, you know, like, like that, whoever's doing that kind of music where like things are really well done and well put together with, you know, your, your major to minor to minor to major and then your sevenths in the right spot. Like I definitely have an ear for sevenths and minors and, and things like that. So, I'm not saying that's not a great thing to have major, minor, minor, major. I mean, listen to like Boys Don't Cry by The Cure. It's a, a very simple song, yet it follows along the lines of, of a musical, musical rules. You know, the rules of, you know, your scale's gonna be, start out, if it's a major scale, it's gonna start major, and then it'll be a minor, minor, major, and up, you know, and then major, 
minor, minor, major, you know, and it just goes like that. And like things like that, but on the, you know, on the most dubious level, right? Like the mo the highest scale you could possibly think. Like I'm not, I'm not about that. You know, I'm about what feels right. What feels right sometimes is the right thing to do musically, but sometimes what feels right is the wrong thing to do musically. <sighs> and everybody's different. Everybody's a little different. You know, some, some people really love Nickelback. And honestly, it's not like their songs are so hard to listen to. I mean, they're, they're catchy and stuff, but it's just the cheesy fact, you know, the cheese factor or whatever, right? Right? So, but I'm not here to, to, to tear down Nickelback or their fans because somebody here probably loves them. And that's okay. I do not mind at all. Like, I'm not... I've never been the kind of guy that likes to like throw people under the bus, but um, I, you, you know when when people treat treat um, lesser human whatever that means, you know uh, uh, what they perceive as a lesser person. Um, when when somebody in a higher position treats a lower positioned person badly, that's that's what I don't like, you know, and, and a lot of the reasons why I don't like. Um, authority and i don't like corporations and things like that but yeah do, do i think that that there's not a use for some of them i mean sure when there's nothing else that you can do but uh go to walmart sure go to walmart you know go to mcdonald's whatever it is go get your your whatever i'm not i'm not that extreme of a guy as far as that stuff goes but but when it comes to i've always had that a little bit of like rebellion in my bones you know and and as evidence from our first album to even the the even let's ride you know like <laughs> i don't know if let's ride has rebellion in it but um i guess you know living a free life is rebellious sometimes you know not all the time but um I, i'm absolutely always uh always very grateful to to have the position and and that i have you know whether it's just living here in america having a, a great job and a great opportunity uh but going further with it and saying okay being an artist that puts out music that people listen to and and can get some some love from and and have have their own life experiences that me meant something to them and the music just happened to be accompanying them in their life. You know, that that's beyond what I can even try to accomplish in life, right? So f for me, uh it's it's all it's all a bonus and it's and I try to I try to treat it with respect. If, above anything, love and respect. Um and you know, because it's like, okay, sure, I meant to do all this. I meant to write this song so that somebody would be comforted in their time of need. Like that's, uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that like I knew all the uses for all these songs. Like I'm just, I'm just like you guys. And I think that's part of the appeal is like, I'm another fellow human being that's just putting my ideas out in the, into the world through songs. And some of them are silly, some of them are, you know, just emotional love songs. And some of them are questions, you know, questions, asking questions. So. Uh, we'll see what happens, but but um, I I've always been rebellious a little bit, and I, and I feel like punk rock um, punk rock needs to stay stay questioning and stay rebellious. Let's let's keep going with it. It's not dead yet. Um, is it gonna get? Is it hit the peaks and valleys? Of course it does. But um, nobody's heard our new record yet, so. Well, uh, you guys are gonna love it. I, I have. A, if you like MXPX, you're gonna love it. <laughs> All right, this is what we're gonna do. I was originally planning on doing some voicemails right now. I'm gonna hold off on that because I don't have time right now. Got to get going. We're gonna do those next week. I appreciate you guys. Um, I got a bunch of things that uh, need happening that are happening a little sooner than I thought they were gonna happen. That's just life, isn't it? Um, Wow, NFL. I don't know what happened with the NFL, but uh, Super Bowl is coming up soon. I don't know if you guys want to call in and talk about that, but please leave a voicemail, 1-360-830-6660. Leave me a voicemail 
ask me a question, give me a topic, we'll get into it. I would love to talk to you guys. Shout out to Bob McKnight. Check out his podcast, The Bob and Katie Show, everywhere you find podcasts. And I appreciate what he does for me, edits, produces. I'm going to have him on very soon. Just got to make that happen. It's all in my court right now. So, uh, all right, you guys, mxpx.com. Thank you so much for all your orders. Mail order is always going. We are we're always uh, out there making it happen for you guys. So I appreciate it. All right. Soon. Soon.